Welcome to the Little Big Business Podcast. I wish there was an elaborate story to it. <laughs> Gets you thinking, doesn't it? As soon as you say it, and as soon as I put it out on my social media. Welcome to the Little Big Business Podcast. I am your host, Danny Hollywood of Danny Hollywood Video Drone Photo, your international award-winning video and photo team. But if you have watched any of the previous episodes, you will know that this podcast is not about me. It is about my illustrious guest. Now... The guest today I am super, super, super excited about because every guest I've had thus far has been from the wedding sector. Now, this is my first guest that isn't. So make some noise and give a huge round of applause to my good friend, Che West of The Cove. Hey. Hello, mate. How you doing? All good, thank you. How are yeah. you? Very good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. Yeah, buzz, man. Buzz, super buzz to have you on. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, man, yeah. I don't often do these sort of things, so uh, yeah. you, you've twisted my arm on this. Absolutely. Yeah. A, ra- a, rare, <laughs> a rare occasion out of the shop, you know? Yes, yes. Okay, so let's start there then. So you mentioned the shop, so the Cove. Cove, yeah. No, man, it's my baby. It's um, nine years old now. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a small clothing store you could say it was once a vintage store but now it's a mixture of vintage and new um what would you call it it's like a lifestyle store i would say kind of something that you can kind of come in and feel like you get the culture straight away when you walk in yes you get the vibe for it i feel like um ticks a lot of boxes that aren't really around here hence why it's it's lasted so long but Predominantly, it was a vintage clothing store Mm -hmm. that kind of elevated into uh, a a clothing store that features my own brand now. So there's a mixture of new and old. Um, Nice. So yeah, that that's 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 my little baby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and obviously you're not far from where my studio is. You're right around the corner. Um, You've been located there for all that time, obviously. But it didn't always start there, did it? So where did it where did it start? So no, it, it, it physically it started there. Mentally, I would say it was in my head for a while. Um, obviously, the, the store opened in 2014, um, which feels like yesterday. Wow, I, I, can, yeah. I, I can remember it as if it was that. Um, but no, the, the idea really started in my head when I started kind of exploring um, the world a little bit. I say the world, the States. Okay. Predominantly where, what the, the shop is almost based on, really, in terms of where I get a lot of the, the clothing from. Um, yeah, I was I was out there. I think 2010 was 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 the, the the year where I really started kind of taking a real big interest in um, proper vintage clothing, um, things that kind of you know aren't readily available over here. Mm-hmm. Um, getting a bit of an eye in for it as well, and just seeing kind of you know what was a bit more kind of harder to come by, what was a bit more kind of rarer, and just kind of taking those mental notes in my head. Mm-hmm. Not obviously with the idea of opening a shop just then, but kind of carrying that forward in in kind of my thoughts about potentially what to do in the future. Cool. Um, Because obviously at that point of my life, I was, you know, going out traveling, working your kind of bar, way to work, kind of getting through life a little bit Uh without really an idea of where I was going to go until, like I said, I got to that point where I was thinking, you know what, this, I like this. Yes. I feel like this could be me a little oh. bit in the years to come. Yeah. So I'll keep it up there for now. And then I'll kind of revisit it when the time's right. Nice. When I've served as many drinks as I can and as many meals as I yeah. can, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, of course. So, yeah, go, going back to kind of, you know, where it all started. <clears throat> you fast forward probably, I don't know, three, two, three years later. Um, uh, me and my ex-partner, um, we went to Barcelona and um, another place that's, you know, rife with just independent stores tucked away on these back alleys mm-hmm. that you know you, you go hunting for them and you find them yeah um very down much. down the aisle down the sides of la rambla everywhere yeah. Yeah? yeah very much like what you do in my shop Absolutely. you know it's kind of taken yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of idea yeah, on yeah. from there but you know we were there and i remember us having discussions about it thinking you know what we, we could really you know go forward and open so if, if the right place came about mm. I feel like we could get get involved here and, yeah. and get things rolling and, and, and try and make a go of it. So, you know, we put together a little business plan of our own. We, we you know, we, we kind of 
self-funded as much as we could. Uh-huh. Started doing market research within the country to see how easy and viable it would be to get things in and obviously stock a, a whole shop. Yes. Um, and we found out that we could do all those things within kind of our means. Um, so then you go on into, you know, October 2014 and we're we're opening the shop up for for the uh for the unveiling and um yeah that that was kind of the the origins of it you know cool yeah no i definitely think um look i i probably did the same sort of thing you know cuz we aren't dis- we aren't desperately far apart in age are we i hope not no cuz i'm 36 i mean i'm 30s <laughs> but I'm not I'm not divulging that information we'll leave it at that we'll leave it there we'll leave it there um, for, for 39 but okay cool. I, I know you were thinking so I know you were thinking 31 yeah absolutely I absolutely get it, I get it a lot yeah of course of course absolutely handsome man that you are <laughs> um, no of course so naturally I do think that I did a lot I like you did a lot of travelling when I was in my early sort of 20s yes yeah. and it it definitely helped forge who I am in terms of, um, you know, an appreciation, I think. I always think that when I... Now, this is very philosophical and out of the business talk, really, but I will... Well, obviously, we've both got little children, yeah? Now, I will implore my son to go as travelling as soon as he can, yeah? Because I will want hit, hit to open his eyes a little bit in terms of how very lucky and fortunate he is yeah with i know that the current state of play isn't that great but at the same time you know we do have it very good here you don't have to go very far or it's not so um no that's cool man awesome um so the the name the cove because obviously i spoke about this previously where um i obviously my surname's holland not hollywood but Friends of mine nicknamed me Hollywood. Then I became a YouTuber. So naturally, and that's how we first met when I was in just my YouTube guys. And this was really sort of taking off, really. Um, And so naturally, it's just evolved from there in terms of, okay, cool. So Danny Hollywood made sense for a YouTuber. Then that became quite a big deal. People recognized me in the street and knew who I was. So it was like, cool. So when it became a business, I was like, well, I've got to continue that on. But The Cove, where did the name come from? I wish there was an elaborate story to it. (laughs) But I think it's pretty much down to where we are. Like geography, you know, in terms of the coastal area. Uh It just felt like it fit where we were. So we just rolled with that. Yeah. Um, it goes part, for me, right now especially, the, the name The Cove, it goes much beyond that now. You know, it's the logo for me. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like the artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> People look at that logo and they don't even have to know that it's called The Cove. Yes. It's really, they just associate what that is with yeah. what that store is yeah. and what it means to everyone yeah. else then. So yeah, the, 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 the name was obviously, we needed a name. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing that really kind of felt like it fit. But the real important part of the process of opening the business, mm-hmm. and it was the most important thing going for, and it still is to this day, as you can see, yeah. it's it's the logo. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I looked at, you know, you look at, any massive brand in the world, you know, you can go from Nike, Adidas, Ralph Lauren, um, Levi's, you know, you, you only have to look at the shape of what that logo is and you know exactly what it is straight away. You don't even have to say Nike or Adidas. Yeah. And it's that reputation that goes before it by just the visual side of it. Yeah. And for me, that was a real important factor in kind of starting up a small business and hoping it evolves into something bigger was that people brand recognition and and just knowing straight off the bat that's that shop of course that's you know doesn't yeah. have to, you know, it, it, the cove whatever is it che i don't you know yeah no of course it's the whole thing you know it's like the logo game isn't it where you yeah, where course, it yeah. is that isn't it it's yeah. can you 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 watching this low you see this logo can you match the business name to the logo yes yeah, and that's what you're saying isn't it, it that actually is, naturally yeah. you put high priority on that logo so that people will instantly go I know who that is. I know where that is. I know where that came from. And, and what it is as well. Absolutely. Like what it means. Yes. And I feel like that's a real kind of, like I say, the thing that's carried it forward. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I get it even to this day, you know, if I'm around and I've, I, you know, I 
often wear my own stuff. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, you, you have to really, but someone would be like, oh, that's that logo from from that shop. And I'm like, oh yeah. And it's like... Yeah, I've got, I tried to dig, I, I've got I've got a couple of hoodies of yours. I've got a couple of beanies of yours. Um, I tried to find, I don't know where it is. I've got a um, really tearly blue hoodie of yours oh, that I was going to wear for today's pod. Can I find it? Can I, <laughs> I to be fair, I, was, I did only look this morning, but yeah, yeah. I thought it would be a cool, nice, cool thing to do. But um, no, definitely, I think the idea that it's got this sense of now this will bleed nicely into the second part of today's pod where we do talk about your other venture but this idea and this sense of community yeah yeah? and that's definitely the vibe that I get when I go in your shop yeah that it is somewhere that it is super inviting that's partly because of the design but also because of you because you you don't make it a you don't make it a store it's not a shop yeah it looks it's got all the presentation of a shop but it definitely is somewhere where you would happily have for your friends come in have a look around the shop sit on the sofa play with your dog yeah and the fact that you've in the past you've hosted concerts events in your store yes that you've got that this is a this is more than a clothing store this is a community this is a right okay cool so i'm here i've got this stuff wicked brilliant you're buying it fantastic but what you're actually doing is you're growing this community yeah and i definitely i applaud you for that it's, it's, it is awesome well yeah essentially what i've tried to make it environment wise is a social hub mm-hmm. I want you to come in and it doesn't matter if you're a friend or not. When you come in, you're comfortable. You come in and you want to be around there. And it separates me from, you know, the high street. And you have to differentiate yourself from places like that and have that personal touch to it and feel like you are coming in and having a bit of a throwback experience to what retail was back in the day, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, you know? I feel like you go in and you support the person as well as the brand Mm -hmm. because we are the same thing, essentially, you know? But... You know, I've worked hard at really kind of, you know, building that environment where, you know, whether you're, you know, someone who's just met me or someone, you know, who knows me forever, you'll come in and you'll want to spend time there and hopefully, you know, spend money as well. But, you know, the key to it all is making it a fun experience for people to come in because they'll come back. Mm -hmm. And that's how your business maintains itself and, and grows forward when you want people to come back for it. Yeah. You don't want people, because, you know, case in point, you know, I've been in places before where if you've got, you know, I wouldn't put myself in a middle age bracket just yet, but, you know, you've got, <laughs> just yet. But, you know, you've got a middle-aged, big, hairy guy sat in the shop front facing as you walk in. Yeah. It can be quite intimidating to, to a young person uh-huh. if it's just that one-on-one interaction. Yeah. And then you've got to expect them to feel comfortable about walking around the shop without thinking, oh my God, have I got to buy something? Or yes. is, he, is he constantly looking over my shoulder to put pressure on anything? Yeah. I never want it to be that way. And that's where I really kind of like jump into it. As soon as anyone comes in, it's like, right, let's get them feeling welcome. Yeah. Let's get them feeling like they really want to be here. Yeah. Not intimidated. Mm-hmm. They feel like they want to come back after that as well. Yeah. And I feel like that's where it really separates itself from some other places. Yeah is that it feels like, you, you know, you belong there a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And I want you to be there. Yeah. I don't want to be sat there on my own. I want people to come in. I want them to have a look around. But then, you know, if they want to talk to me about stuff, I'm so open with my time and, and my experiences from being there. And if they want to know things about, you know, an old denim jacket or a, a flannel shirt, I'm yeah. there for them, you yeah. know? And it, 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 it gets them going. You can see it in their faces, you know, of think... Course. I really enjoyed that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I must come back and spend all my money with him again. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you do that. but No, but of course. Yeah. It's sincere as well. Yeah. It's, there's no fakeness to it. It's really, you know, I want to share this whole thing with you, yes. you know? Because let's be real about it. So, you know, we both run businesses. We need, it's not a case of we want, we need to make money from them. Yeah. But that money doesn't come at a caveat of that it's about that. Yeah, I, I always feel that from my standpoint, I, I, I don't lose sight of the fact that I am in an extremely lucky existence here that, look, I love, I get to do what I love. And um, being now in here, 
I'm, I'm adding more pieces to the puzzle and it's growing at a rate of knots, which is fantastic. It is what I wanted when I took it full time. Um, but in, in the same breath, you know, I'm only ever making as money enough money as I need and trying to strike that balance of this is how much it's worth. This is the value I bring to the table. But I, I don't want it to feel expensive because I'd like to think that actually what I bring to the table isn't in itself doesn't make it expensive. And I would 100% agree. Obviously, you are, you know, like me. Yeah, we, we're both covered in tattoos. Yeah, we've both got long hair. You know, you're obviously quite a stocky bloke. Yeah, but you you get whatever you feel. If that's the feeling you're going through, I can tell you firsthand you nail it. Yes, because you are you are you're like a huggable bear. Yeah, and that's... I like to be known as a grizzly bear, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> huggable at times, you know? <laughs> no, because you are a, a, essentially a super nice, super approachable human, and you give that vibe off in your, in your, in your gaff 100%. And I'm, a people, I'm a people person, you know? That's, yeah. that's what I've kind of grown into through this business. And it, it, you know, you can kind of take that into your personal walk of life with that as well. What this business has afforded me just for a professional standpoint, but just also that personal kind of, you know, step up in confidence and kind of, you know, social skills. Mm -hmm. Those, you know, because, you know, you believe it or not, there were times growing up when I was very, you know, my social anxiety was high. Yeah, I didn't really have that many people skills to kind of you know hold my own with or feel comfortable with okay. so you know that shop has, has kind of been such a blessing and kind of how I've been able to deal with with people from all walks of life and now you fast forward to where I am now where I can easily have a hold a conversation with you know so many different you know demographics mm. age wise you know interest wise anything I yeah. feel like it's there for me now and it's all kind of come from where I've built it from you know what I've done in the shop yeah from that personal standpoint as yes. well as what I'm doing in the business side as well yeah but um awesome. yeah it's it yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> no nah, man it's, it's it's wicked it's so it's really cool to hear you speak about it in those terms it's also nice that I think that some of the things I've been finding by doing this pod is actually I've got people that side of the table thinking about themselves yeah. yeah thinking about dude you're what you have you're smashing it yeah and that you've you've taken back in 2014 you took one hell of a risk you took that risk to come away from the employed world and gamble on yourself yeah, that you can nail it and you can do it and given some of the things we're going to talk about in part two as well you'll see very shortly, guys and girls, how you truly are like properly, properly, properly smashing it. Um, and obviously I've been one of the beneficiaries of some of that as well in the past and something going forward as well that I'd like to do and stuff. And it's um, and that's all down to you. So bravo to you, my friend. Bravo to you. Yeah. Nah, man, absolutely. Um, so obviously I, one thing you've got in your notes is your... Um, talking about the fact that so 2019 um you obviously and now i'm assuming here that when you say you started the business with your partner yeah. is that the sort of time that yes yeah okay. yeah that's when we kind of par okay. parted ways yes okay so you end up obviously working in that store on your own i know how that feels because obviously i'm also here on my own 99 yeah. percent of the time yeah. um so yeah so what was that like for you um a mixture of emotions. Um, obviously, the first one was was very kind of, can I do this? Mm -hmm. Can I do this on my own? Who do I reach out for if I do need help? Because obviously, you know, that bridge was burnt at that time. So, who? yeah, it is really falling on me. Can I make it work? Because, you know, was it just me? And don't get me wrong, there was, it wasn't just me. Yes. It wasn't at all. Yeah. She offered so much to it. And, you yeah. know, looking back now, you can see that, you know, the, the, the groundwork that she put down that made the shop what it is as well, you know? So 
I've always got the respect for her yeah, yeah, from, yeah. from the from the professional standpoint yeah, yeah, as well. It's just uh, you know she did an amazing job at what she did. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, like you say, you go back to it, you know, you're on your own and it's like, wow, where, where do we go from here? Because, you know, there is the excitement there as well of like, right, I can really mold this into how I envision this to be in my head. Whether that takes, you know, a year, two years, three years, I feel like it's there for me to go down pathway wise. It's just whether I can do it on my own. And there were days where I just thought, you know what, I could just pack this in. And I feel like, you know, as much as I'd hate it, I'd probably have to go back into the employment world, you know, yeah. but there's such a overwhelming feeling in my mind of like, you can't stop this. Yeah. This, this, is, this has come too far for it to just put an end to. Uh-huh. Like you need to push forward with this yeah. and, and evolve it into something that you really want it to be. So, you know, that throughout that year, it was very much kind of like looking at it and thinking, well, where do I start with this? What what can I do to make this my own? Yeah. But not being so disrespectful into, t- you know, taking away what it previously yeah, yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it didn't come just instantly. No. You know, it was a work in progress. Um, and you can only say until probably the last couple of years, I would say, I'm at a point where it's like, what's in my head is what I see yeah the ideas have come to fruition nice. the networking that I've kind of worked hard to to put on it, you know and put through it it's all there and it's coming back at me now mm-hmm. um and just the the just the visual of you know what I want the brand to be looked at as yeah is there cool. in shop form you know um so yeah it, it yeah it's been a bit of a up and down process men- yeah. just mentally more, more than anything yeah. stuff that people won't see very much behind the scenes yeah, 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 yeah. you know because I'm very much one that can hide it I can yeah. I can be in the store yeah. people can come in and I can chat to them for hours yeah, yeah, and they yeah. wouldn't even know there was an issue no. I can go home and think right sh- it's the face in front of it is 100% the face that you can put in front of mental health isn't it in terms of that you can present it's like they say about everybody everybody that's ever ever gone yeah that only a week ago there's pictures of them smiling with family and the next week they've yeah. they've got rid of themselves, yes. Now, I know because I've been through it um, that, yeah, it's one of those that uh, to the general public, no, you wouldn't have a clue. But to my wife, my parents-in-law, they know, they can see it. Yeah, it's written all over you. It's... it's um, it's definitely a tricky one, um, but it is definitely, you know, look, you are, a, you are definitely, and I said this on a previous pod, that this won't fail because I will not allow it, yeah, and you've got that same mindset, haven't you, yeah? It won't fail because you will not allow that to happen, yeah, and you're there, aren't you, in terms of what you, you're like, right, no, this is who I am, this is what I do, um, I'm not an employee anymore. I am not someone else's to tell what to do. I'm not a slave to the system. I am my own boss. I have my own time. I can be as busy as I want to be. I can be as unbusy as I want to be. I have control. I've got both hands on the steering wheel, which is nice. Yeah. But you have really recently taken on someone else. Yeah, no, I've got one of my friends. He's working for me now. Um, So he's in there today. So it's allowed me to actually come out and do something. Yeah. different you know yeah. um so he's he's only been there about a month now yeah but you know it really allows me to uh you know have that extra day off where i can you know i feel like if you know we can get into it a little bit as well with you know th- th- this past year especially but you know i had to kind of just stop at some point and just be like i can't just constantly work yeah you know i've got my little daughter that's getting older by the day yeah you know and bringing the sass and i don't want to miss any of that you know it's all there for me to to witness firsthand and i don't want to be just at work all the time Sorry, bro. Go on. what is that all oh, <laughs> right let's turn that off right there we go carry on <laughs> it's, my, it's, my, it's my daughter i think <laughs> yeah no, yeah um so you know, it, it really was a case of like, I really want to get someone in to just to, you know, help out with the shop, give me that time, but then also take under my wing because mm-hmm. I have so much that I want to to share mm-hmm. and so much to teach mm-hmm. 
from my experiences in, yeah, yeah. in self-employed life, yeah. you know, in, in the vintage clothing game, in, in the clothing game in general, yeah. but just independent, you know, businesses, you know, everyone's got their own kind of outlook on how they do things. Yeah. And I really want to show people how I've done it, yeah. you know, whether that be someone coming in and, and working with me and then me kind of like, you know, sitting them down in time and being like, right, this is how we've done it. This is how I've done this, how I've done that. You know, whether that, that's for them in the future, I don't know, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. really gives them a, a valuable le- like business yeah. education yeah, yeah. without, you know, and getting paid for it as well. Of so, you, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a win-win for them. Yeah. But, you know, it's really kind of in my, in my mind now to really, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in, later on, is I'm really looking to just push on with, 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 with people now yes. and give back what I've kind of yeah. had and you know and help as much as i can yeah. um but yeah i've got yeah i've got someone working for me now which is is, is definitely helped me level out a little bit nice yeah because i again you know i always talk about the fact that i would never ask someone i'd never ask an employee to work the way i do um i'm i'm full of, it's, it's you know what i mean it never if you run a business and you think that you can clock off at five o'clock, that's not how it works, is it? At all. Um, I only clock off when I close my eyes and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah and that's pretty much it. Um, I am getting better at that. Um, but in the same breath, what I always, I say that I'm quite good at turning it off, turning it on, being on, being in the, in the moment and not thinking about work. My wife tells me I'm rubbish. <laughs> I think I'm good. She thinks I'm rubbish. So maybe I'm not nailing it quite as much as I'd think. Yes, um, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm thinking here, you started, so you, you've, you're on your own in 2019 and then literally, what, two years into it and we get that, lovely thing which obviously would affected it would have affected you heavily in covid yeah. yeah um so yeah what did covid look like for you it was just you know surreal times uh-huh. for everyone uh-huh. and i'm not saying that i'm you know worse off than anyone else yeah. everyone went through it you know but purely as a business standpoint yeah. and a small business standpoint very tough yeah. you know because it's your bread and butter. Yeah. If you ain't getting money out of that, then yeah, where yeah. are you getting money? No one's there to pay you. No. You know, it's purely down to what you do. Yeah. So yeah, it hit. Obviously, we had to close the shop down for for the pretty much the, the summer, wasn't it? Yeah. Pretty I much, remember because yeah. I was probably drunk every <laughs> every morning in the back garden yeah. having a barbecue and heading up the bed by about four p.m. every day. Yeah. But very weird times when you look back on it. I'm sure everyone thinks the same way. But, you know, it was a case of like, right, we need to adapt here. Mm. Um, so what I was, what I did was I literally stripped the whole shop down. I mean, gutted it. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I've got a spare room in, in my house. So um, I emptied that out and um, turned it into a little pop-up store that was based at my house uh-huh. that people could shop online with. Um, so the website turned into the main source of income then yeah. and then I was working with obviously the, the couriers to get stuff sent out yeah. thing is you try selling clothes to people for a social occasion and you can't even have a social occasion yeah you know it's very it's very difficult it's not one of those yeah. kind of things that you think you know right I, I definitely need that t-shirt for today yeah because you don't yeah because <laughs> no because i'd say definitely about what you sell you're not selling your everyday wares are you no. you 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 are you are you are selling stuff that is going to give you a certain look is going to give you a certain feel yeah. stuff that you would you go in and it's going to be a purchase that you're going to want to you're going to hopefully want to show off yeah. and be out there yeah. with yeah and then and then we're not allowed to do that and it's like okay so why would I buy there when I can buy here for, you know, I can I can go to, I don't know, not Primark because obviously they're not online, but you get my point, yeah, that who who are selling just rubbish. If, if, if I, if, <laughs> but if I, you know, if I'm predominantly a, an online store, my competition like goes through the roof. It, it if, if anything, it's, it's never ending. Yes. Because it's a whole world of it. Yeah. The store is different because it's it's a standalone. Yeah. You know, there's nothing else like it yeah. for what I offer in that store. There's nothing like it. Yeah. 
but online you're up against everyone so that was you know going through your mind you're thinking am i gonna be all right here luckily obviously we had the the small business grants like the small business relief uh forget what it was called but um that really got me through it and um you know it allowed me to um kind of stop a little bit with you know what i saw the shop as physically as well so whilst it was shut for those months i got in there and, and, and redecorated it and it kind of as bad as it was that that period it really allowed me as well to kind of put a proper marker on what i wanted the shop to look like visually yeah so case in point i mean i had a lowered ceiling it was something out of like an 80s office like uh-huh. when them, them panels that just i mean every camera shot i was taking of a product <laughs> had to kind of slightly <laughs> tilt yeah. Yeah. do not catch Don't the ceiling exactly the yeah because people would be looking at that more than the product yeah um i wanted rid of that yeah. so i went in there got a local builder he came in we stripped the ceiling away what you find above it is almost twice the height of what the shop is. So it really kind of, then you're thinking, my word, like you've got so much space now and it gives such a different outlook on when you come into the store. It makes it feel bigger because of the height. And then yeah, with that, yeah. you can go more visual with the, the height of the, the walls yeah. and everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, what, what it is now, or what I've got in there. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's like night and day from what it was. Yeah. So, you know, during those lean months of, you know, really not really know what to do, mm. like everyone really, yeah, yeah. I kind of cracked on and, and, and got stuff sorted in there. Yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the year itself of 2020 was, I mean, you didn't know whether you were coming or going no. because you, we, what, we came out of lockdown, gave it, what, a month, two months, and then you're back in it again by Christmas yeah. or November, or wh- however it would have been. It all feels like a bit of a dream, you know? know. And it was just like, Jesus, right, we need to kind That's of, time, yeah, get us, get our stuff together. But even in like a, you know, we, I go back to what I was saying about like social anxieties and stuff. Mm. I feel people are still there with it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah, changed yeah. a lot of people, yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it be young or old. Yeah. And I felt so bad for those people that have not really come out the other side of it on that regard, yeah. where they, they kind of, they, they, they struggle with the interaction side. They struggle with you know, talking to, to anyone, yeah. let alone leave the house. Yeah. I mean, they may as well still be in a lockdown yeah. in their heads. So. I've got a friend, a friend of mine and my wife, good friend of my wife. Um, they've got a little boy and he is the shyest little boy. And he was born at the start. So he, in those 12, in those whole, whole full 12 months, pretty much, didn't leave the house. No interaction with anybody. No interaction with anybody. And he is, he's getting better, but he is, he was up until literally 12 months ago, was pretty much mute. He wouldn't say anything to anybody. He wouldn't interact with you. That's no coincidence. No, it, it isn't, it isn't at all, is it? I've heard it before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a he, he was a pure a pure COVID a pure COVID baby. Because later my son was a COVID baby, but he was a he was a product of COVID, a product of a lot of free time. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, naturally, yeah, he didn't have to go for any of that. I was very lucky um, that I wasn't supposed to be obviously at the birth, which was going to be tricky, but I was. Because I know f- you dress up as a <laughs> dress up as a doctor, did you? I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a lucky situation where I shot a lot of the, I shot a lot of their oh, weddings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really I, it is absolutely one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Before we close off the first section, yeah. I did want to talk about. Um, so obviously, then we've come back to normal from from COVID. Um, but then, was it last year or was it the year before you've had, obviously, you've had the two break Two break-ins, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was in fact, I, I jumped the gun with the COVID kind of situation because, it, in fact, the first break-in happened before COVID. Oh, okay. Um, so that was kind of something to deal with even before mm. the world turned upside down, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. That was a real tough pill to swallow because obviously you've worked so hard in putting everything into your work and, you know, building up that kind of trust in the community of what your shop stands for, yeah. all of a sudden for it to be just disintegrated yeah. by by a stupid, you know, someone who, obviously, you know, it was clear they didn't even know what the shop was. It was just merely a kind of, right, it's a backstreet store that's tucked away, 
gonna take my chance here yeah. and just gr- smash and grab yeah. almost. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a real kind of hard time with that kind of just you know getting that com- confidence back up into you know thinking that everything was going to be cool. Yeah. Um, COVID happened. You know, I did get myself through that that break in. You know, COVID happened. You come back into it. You're thinking, right, here we go. Fresh start. Everyone's back into work. Everyone, life can crack on a little bit. Gave it, what, a month later, I get broken into again. Um, again, by just someone completely different. Someone who, again, chance in it. Yeah. Because it, you could tell by what they took. Yes. You know, they took a lot of my stuff with my logo on. And it's like, well, good luck trying to sell that because I'm the only place you can sell it yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's only me it. that sells it. Yeah. No one else is going to be buying yeah, it. It's, yeah. it's hot goods straight from the off, yeah. you know? So they, they've done that. Luckily, we found the person. We've, we've, we've sorted it all out. We've got all the stuff out, but it's not the point. It's that element of trust. trust again, yeah, the, the, violation, the, the violation, isn't it? It's, it's like that's, your, that's your space. That's your safe space. It's like breaking into your house. It is, yeah. I, anyone who says different is a liar. I've had my house broken into. Well, I know, know exactly how that feels. Know. Yeah, I felt, I felt particularly protective over my wife. My wife felt... Yeah. <laughs> My, because my wife felt very violated, yeah. yeah. And then naturally, I felt super protective, yeah. yeah. Um, it and all the yeah, it does, yeah. doesn't it? And and that is essentially, you know, that's you, you have your home, but this is also they, like this place. This has become my home, yeah. Because yeah. you spend so much time there, how can it not be? And I've and this is exactly what this is exactly like your store. This is exactly what I want. Yeah, it, it's, it, it looks how I want it to look. It's a representation of you. It is, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so it, it is. It is important. So you know, for for someone to come in twice in the space of a year and and do that was very kind of. It did get me thinking, and you know, and I, I'm quite a tough character deep down. Is it worth it? You know, I don't know. If, I don't want to be going through this again no. because it's not just that it's the insurance goes up because the premiums, because yeah. they've smashed the window. Yeah. It's having to redo all the stock again because it's all been ruined from what they've taken. Yeah. And then it's also kind of, you know, people thinking, oh, you know, do we support him because, you know, out of pity or is it because you really want to be there? You get all those mixture of emotions yeah, yeah. that take control of your mind. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about mental health and how people were struggling through COVID and, and even in just life in general, yeah. it was a real tough year kind of just uh, to kind yeah. of mentally get yourself back onto a track where you thought you were yeah. to get back rolling again, which I did, you know, I roll with a punch half the time. Yeah. And I feel like that's the only way you can do it and succeed in, a, in an environment like what we're in. But yeah, it was a real kind of that 2020 into 2021 was tough times. Yeah, a year we can forget about. <laughs> Wipe that off the record books, never happened. Never want to talk about it again. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, we can not. Cool. Okay, then, guys. Um, what I reckon is a nice place for us to finish part one. Join us very shortly for part two. So, welcome back to part two of the Little Big Business podcast with my guest, Che West of The Cove. Now, part one, we have spent the entire time talking about that side of the business. Now, this man is a legend. Now, if you are in the, especially in the Bartsboro area or the North Devon area, and you run a creative small business, you know this dude. Now, the reason why I say that is we're going to talk about your other beast, So you've got this epic shop, but you also, and it's crazy how many of these in a year you run now. It's so impressive, yeah? From the outside in, when I go to a lot of shows, yes? And you have set me off a trailing thought where I'm thinking about running an event as well, possibly in the same location. Um, Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, But I want to talk to you about your Epic Beast Connect and Create. So, um, I'll tell you what I think it is and you then can correct me. Yes. So I would say that connect and create is a event where creatives who either physically create like I do, or they build 
or they bake or they where they do something that has their own creative news and nuance on it can come to a large event area and showcase it in an in an in a style where like a food fest people can come they can get involved they can actually talk face to face with business owners that they wouldn't normally get the opportunity to um you tell me what's what what, what do you classify I, I i'd say you're on the right road yeah. with that i feel like it really is a case of showcasing not only the the creative brands that these people run but the people mm -hmm. and i feel that's such an important part of what a community can be mm -hmm. is the people that are behind it so yeah i think in essence it really is a case of i mean the hint is in the name of what the festival is yes um connect and create yes i want people to come there i want people to to, to connect as well as show off the creations yes and you know really you know build that network of people because you know I, I we'll get to the to, to the starting point of what connect and create is you know and it started way back in 2015 only a year into what the shop was mm -hmm. but it was something that entered my head really early doors and it may have been a case of you know seeing what the shop offered me yeah. and what the shop you know meant to a few other people mm -hmm. you know some of the local artists that we started stocking in store in the in the early years and it makes you think, you know what? There's not really anything around here that really kind of gives someone a platform of, of someone of our nature yes. um, to, to show their talent to people, mm -hmm. but on, you know, on, a, on a bigger scale than yes. what they're already doing. Um, so I thought, you know what? It'd be a real cool attempt to maybe start a mini sort of festival environment um, Obviously, we've got a really cool venue in the in the in the Panya Market in Barnstable that just you know space wise, it's yeah, it's yeah. perfect for it. The, yeah. the infrastructure is there as well in terms of the parking and just location, mm -hmm. ticks every box. Yeah. But how about you know let's go about maybe renting that place out, see if people want to get involved for one of these events that's in my mind, and then roll from there a little bit. So I think it was maybe November or December of, of 2015 that we, we, we hosted the first Connect and Create. Mm -hmm. And although, you know, you look back on it and you think, well, you know, there was a lot of people there, but it was very kind of like, you know, working out things a little bit as well. Like, what, where, where are we going to go forward with this? I mean, yeah, we've got all these people here. But I want it to be more than it just being like they're turning up and selling stuff. Yes. I want them to come away from it and thinking, you know what? I really enjoyed mm -hmm. being in this environment. Yeah. And I really felt like I got something coming away from that, from the people I was talking to, from the things that I saw. You know, give people that shot in the arm that sometimes yeah. a lot of them do need. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, you, 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 you look at that <clears throat> and it worked. It was great. You know, the feedback was really good. I think it was good because it was something different. And I think that's what I was really looking for mm -hmm. when I was getting that feedback. I was yes. wanting people to say that was different from what we do around here. Yes. So there, that gives you the fuel then to think, you know what, we could build on this. We yeah, could, yeah, we could yeah. go forward here. It's not just going to be your run of the mill market day. Yeah. It's going to be more, much more than that, yeah. you know? So what will be in 2015 then? So 16, 17, 18. So, you know, four or five years under the belt of doing those festivals slowly gathering pace on the people that want to get involved mm -hmm. you know in terms of just you know established traders that yeah. have just it's turned their heads and they're like you know what we don't really do a lot of events yeah, yeah. but we want to get involved in this yeah. because i feel like it's more than just what he's saying in terms of it being a market day yes it's everything else yeah. much like yourself getting involved in it one yeah, year yeah, wasn't yeah. it and you know yeah. it's just a case of just Tweaking that interest of someone yeah. and thinking, you know, we really want to get involved with yeah. a project here, an ongoing project yeah. as well. Yeah, because yeah. obviously at that time for me, it was, I was, this was still in its infancy and I was more of, I was really just, I was making videos for me. I was a YouTuber. Yeah. Now, being a YouTuber in North Devon, I was on my own. I, I knew I knew one other person that I was I believe at the time I was at the point of the height of my YouTube channel I was the second biggest channel in in North Devon. Okay. Um, there's a gaming channel that around here somewhere yeah. that's got 
huge numbers, does huge, huge numbers. And then there was me. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, and it was, it, it was such a refreshing thing to do because I could show, I could do what I do. Yeah, I uh, yeah I could and I couldn't and I've never been able to really really do that you know because obviously I do I do a lot of I do a lot of wedding shows and you know they are all very they're all the same yeah um, they're, they're wicked I do very much enjoy them um, but I can't truly express who I am mostly because I always get the feeling that when I go to wedding shows everybody's a bit on on their toes, yeah, in terms of because they think that everybody is trying to sell to them, yeah? Whereas I don't do selling at wedding shows. I chat with people at wedding shows, yeah? I, I, I sit back, I come away from my stand, and I let people have a look, yeah? Because then if they are then spending time there, I know that they're interested. And then I'll go and say hello to them, Yeah? Um, and that's all I really say, yeah? And I let them dictate the conversation. If they want to know stuff, they want to know stuff. If they yeah. don't want to talk, they don't want to talk. It's no. absolutely fine. Yeah, because I want it... I, I, yeah, I, I, didn't, I don't want everybody to feel like that they can't talk to me. Whereas I definitely feel the community that you've built there, it's not that feel. It's very festively... It's a very, very wicked festival feel in terms of... You might go and talk to somebody just purely because you think what they do is cool, yeah? Now, that's wicked, yeah. yeah? Because as a small business owner, if somebody turns around to you and says, "You're that's awesome, you're smashing it, yeah? That's never going to leave you with anything but a good feeling, is it? Yeah? yeah? I do get told on a, on a frequent level, do you know what I mean? That, you know, what I'm doing is this and what I'm doing is that and all that sort of jazz. And I will, you know, I cannot lie. It does leave me with a nice fuzzy feeling. Inside. And so it should. Yeah, absolutely. So it should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, for me, that's the, the number one paramount kind of to anything is, is the people that I curate to be there, the people that ask to be there and I, I let them be a part of it. Mm. You know, the, the major thought in my mind is, what are they going to get out of it yeah. when they're applying? And that, you know, that determines whether I feel like the festival is right for them as yeah. well. But I feel like, you know, you look at some of them and you think, you know what, this is this is perfect for you. Yes. Because I know you're such a talented, amazing creative. You can see it yeah. visually. You can yeah. see it. Yeah. But maybe they're lacking in that confidence area or they're yes. lacking in that exposure area. And that's where this really comes into play. Or, or physically a platform to do it. Yeah. Or physically a platform to do yeah. it. Because a lot of... Yeah. So, obviously, my one experience was in that was at that moment. Um, yeah. And obviously, part of that was I did a... Obviously, I did a photo battle for everybody. And I, gave, and I did a giveaway for it. Now, I'm walking around and I'm seeing businesses that I don't even know. Yeah? Now, it's wicked that you've got this platform and it's cool actually because I know I noticed that at the last one you had April Double Day yes, yeah yes, and she's my she's my friend well, yeah okay. because she obviously jewellery she naturally yeah. she's part of the wedding scene okay. um, and she's a good friend of mine cool. yeah um, so it's wicked to see especially because obviously I know it because I'm in it yeah I people see me as a wedding supplier a wedding videographer, a wedding photographer. Yeah. Well, my business name isn't that. No. I'm not that. No. I am a videographer and a photographer. Yeah. I happen to have a skill set that means that I'm well established in the wedding industry. Yeah. But I also do a lot of commercial work. Mm. I could do more commercial work, but I think people, because they've got the blinkers on a little bit, which is a little bit of my own doing, yeah. I won't lie. Yeah, um, they have this feel of that, I am a wedding videographer and photographer and I'm, and I am, but that's one of a few hats I wear. Yeah. yeah? It's not the hat I wear. No. So, um, I definitely think into next year, that's going to be where I'll be re-educating a little bit. And that's where, that's when, when I get, that's what my focus is going to be for next year. And that's when we'll, 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 we'll team up again and, yeah, and we'll get sure. back to it 100% because I am desperate to be a part of it because I love it and I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and, but naturally because like I've said previously, my 
I always want to make sure that when I go to any presentation, any show, that I'm always putting my very best foot forward. Yeah. Now, I've done that in the wedding scene, yeah. but I don't have that same sort of stature in just my overall guys where I talk about the fact that, yes, I do weddings, but I do property and I do advertising yeah. and I do portraits and I do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um I just happen to do more weddings than anything else because those are the ones that put the they they are the weddings are the ones that put the food on the table yeah, yeah. because they're the only thing I can control mm. because weddings are but isn't that the exciting part that you've got all that to come should you wish to get involved with it and I think that's where yeah. people are starting to take note of it all now yeah, it's yeah. like what a great opportunity this is a platform this is mm -hmm. that have been built purely for them yeah. not for anyone else but for them yeah to showcase what they do, who they are, where they want to go with it, and kind of, you know, to the masses mm -hmm. and the demographics that, you know, they are looking for, yes. but they may not be sure where to find them. Yeah. This is them give, being giving it to them there on the days that we do them. Yeah, yeah. And then it's really up to them how they kind of work with it then. And I think that's the beauty of it, you know, every time we've done them, especially these last couple of years where I feel like it's <clears throat> really stepped up Oh, you've you have ramped up a level the last twelve months. Yeah. Because how many shows do you run now? So it started off as one a year. We're up to four a year yeah. now. So we do the two summer events and then we do the two winter ones, which we've obviously got one coming up in I think three weeks time um, to finish off the year. But multi platforms now, multi days where one you can diversify the people that do them. Because the, 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 the waiting list for these events now are, are just through the roof. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I didn't, I, in my wildest dreams, yeah, did I think yeah, that yeah. I would be processing 50 people on reserve for a, an event that you've put on that, you know, you could, that, it's amazing. But then that, that shows the strength in not what I've, just what I've done. Yeah. It's what everyone else has done with it. And that's where I really want to take it back into it being the community project that's been built together. But what you've done in those early years is you've lit a little fire. Yeah. yeah? yeah and now sure. that little fire is a big fire. Of yeah. Course, you've yeah. built this little, this little, this little ember yeah. and it's and exactly what you designed it for yeah. is it's is it it's it's give all these people this little opportunity, this yeah. little tickle yeah. to go, you could showcase yourself in a different light here, yeah. in a better light, in a bolder light, in a brighter light. Yeah. yeah. Um, and get yourself in front of people that they might they could just be strolling down the high street and they see that looks different in there. Yeah. They might not have a clue. They could not even be from here. So yeah. they could be here for the yeah. day. They could walk past it, come in, meet you. Yeah. They could find something in you that you'd never, you'd never get that audience. Yeah. yeah? And it's just, it is awesome. But that's the beauty of it. It's, so it, 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 it's, so, it, it's, it's endless, the possibilities that can come from it and spawn from it as well. And I feel like, you know, where we've put in this groundwork over the years for it to come to fruition for what these say these last two years have done in particular is, is, is really kind of leveled up on these platforms. You know, we've built the foundations with the early years. We've started putting the, 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 the walls in place with the traders that want to do it, the right traders that want to yeah. do it and creatives. I shouldn't yeah. just say traders, creatives. Yeah. <clears throat> the next step is obviously establishing what the bit, what these festivals mean to people now, more than it just being a market day, like I was saying to earlier. I don't want it to be looked at as that at all. Yeah. Um, and now you're putting another floor down now where like, you know, the walls are being built for what will come from these events. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, where we go into the new year and where I really want to kind of push on with, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get to this as well, is, it, you know, is, is the collaboration side and it's the chance to give other people the opportunity to get their ideas heard on a grander scale, yeah. you know, because I've opened the doors with it now yeah. in this area, I yeah. would say, you know, and it's people are starting to take notice of what it is yeah. And, it, and the name kind of goes before itself. Yeah. Much like I did with the shop, much like you've yeah, done with yeah. your branding, anyone that really puts the focus on what the branding is, yeah. everything else kind of follows suit with it. And I feel like that's where we're at now with the festival. Yeah. It looks after itself to a degree, yeah. but now we can evolve it into, yeah. you know, we go down this avenue, that avenue, that avenue. You know, it's a never ending. It's what this is, isn't it? 
this is this is the start of hopefully something that will become very established and just a part of uh, an extension of my business yeah Yeah. um and the fact that it will it is designed as a platform for my fellow creatives Yeah. yeah so that they can say things that they because look there is no me and you are different beasts yeah so in terms of you i would have no problem i i suspect now it's something you don't do but it is something that i don't suspect you would do i know you say that you obviously you've become a different beast in terms of with your anxiety and stuff and being able to talk to people but um obviously what i'm talking about here is what we're doing now so right now i'm talking to a camera yeah now luckily in this guise we're having a conversation so it is really different but when you're on your own, you are literally talking to a camera and it's so very weird. Yeah. yeah, it's it's taken me years and years and years to do it the way that I do it. And I and even then I have a certain way that I do it yeah. where and it's it's things that I, I've taught to my one of my state agents, for instance, who I do work for, because I've basically taught him how to present right, yeah. because he in his best intentions, he couldn't he could but he couldn't, yeah? Um, it's a difficult thing, talking to a camera. Um, and But what you're doing is, by hopefully by doing things like this, I'm giving people the opportunity to talk to a camera, but without having to do it on their own, no, yeah. yeah? And and essentially, what, you're, what you've done is, is exactly that, yeah? But instead of putting a camera in front of them, getting them to talk to it, you've gone, right, come out of your comfort zone, in your little, you know, I'm thinking some of the guys that, you know, I I can't remember the business name of the year that I I went and took part, but the guy that sticks out for me is the guy that does surfboards. Yeah, now I don't recognize him. I've never seen him since. Now, I suspect that he's probably working out of a a warehouse or something like that, making these surfboards. Now it takes him out of his comfort zone. It takes him out of his little safe haven and it shoves him in front of the masses. Now, that's only going to be that's only going to improve and improve him as a human make him more but it's also going to shed light on his business yeah. which is what we all want isn't it yeah, yeah? um you know because obviously this space is in its infancy this is only 3 months in now my hope is is that over time this will do what it's designed to do. So this, yes, is a nice safe haven for me, it's somewhere where I'm much more productive and I can do this podcast. But it is also somewhere that I do want to be accessible to the general public. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Um, yeah. But naturally, I also, and I actually did use, and this is where we go back to the shop, actually. I did actually use you, unfortunately, as an example in terms of, because of the nature of, like, even now, I'm limiting the first podcast. I shot off five cameras. I'm only shooting off three today. But still, these three cameras with their lenses all on, the tripods they're on that aren't cheap, you know, you're looking at about 30 grand's worth of camera equipment. And that's not excluding the lights, you know what I mean? The computer that's cost, that costs X and Y, these microphones, that laptop that's recording, yeah? Now, if I had a shop front... <laughs> I might as well wrap it in a bow, yeah, and be like, yeah. you know, I've you, what I haven't got here is um, I've got a, um, a big, like, screen that sits, it's about, it's about that wide, actually, and it's a bit shorter, but it's like a giant iPad, like you see in, like, okay. shopping centres, yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah, and it showcases my wedding videos. Oh, right. Now, I do that because it, looks really good yeah Yeah. again it's that whole idea of yeah that idea of putting your best foot forward isn't it so um i don't even have this here because mostly i don't need it here it stays at home because it only comes out for wedding shows um but if i had a shop front that wouldn't that would be in my window yeah and it's not no so this is so this is perfect for me really being on the third being on that third floor um just makes my life a little bit more stress-free which is which is nice which is nice as absolutely um so obviously what did what did inspire the idea that because obviously when i when i got involved initially it was one date yeah so now you're doing two in the summer two in the two in the winter what's inspired because initially didn't you go 
didn't you go one summer, one winter? Yeah. So and then it's evolved, and now it's evolved into two so, summer, two winter. So last year it was one summer event and then two winter events. Okay. Um, so yeah, it kind of went from one to three. Yeah. Um, and then this year, it, such as was the demand. Yeah. Two and two. Nice. Um, what really, yeah, it, it really, you know, stuck with me from maybe the last year I did the one per year was just so many people wanted to get involved. And and I could see that, that there was just such a conveyor belt of people that want to get involved, that, like the right people as well. Yeah. And I didn't want to go another year where I'd be like, well, sorry, because I like to, st- one thing I do is I stay loyal to the people that do the festivals. Yeah. So they always get first refusal. Uh-huh. Um, pretty much they'll be okay as soon as they put a form in they're good to go Um, because I feel like they've helped build what it was so I feel like we work together with it that's where it comes into it not just being looked at as mine it's it's ours so out of loyalty you know that's a given but then with that comes limited space for anyone new to get involved so you think to yourself well, well how about you know case in point the first year where we did the two winter ones and the summer one You've got two new events now. Mm-hmm. Well, let's give one event to the people that, you know, stayed loyal to the previous year. Yeah. So they get, you know, that regardless. Uh-huh. But then we open the other two up for, for people. Yeah, yeah. A bit of a free-for-all for anyone to yeah. want to get involved, like, that's yeah. new. Um, and that was the case. You know, you have a turnover of, you know, yeah. 50, 60% new creatives coming into these events. And it's like, where the hell have you lot come from? Yeah. Like, you, you know, you, you're all local as well. Yeah. And then, you know, that really kind of stays in your head then. And you think, well, the demand is there. Yeah. The passion is there anyway for yeah, me. Yeah. The, the enjoyment yeah. of putting this together is, is just a given now. Yeah, yeah. And the satisfaction off the back of these events, when you see the interaction side of it from old and new traders and creatives, yeah. is, is for me what keeps it going yeah. and what, what makes me want to keep it growing bigger and better. Um, so yeah and it shows in its own success there the only way I can cap cult, the only way I can really explain this for you, for you to make it make sense is that so I go to um, I go to Bath and West Showground for um, the big Southwest wedding show um, now they host a spring event and a winter event yeah. now if I could I would do every event they put on because I think it is the best show yeah. Um, I am at a point where I am thinking about going to do the big national wedding show, but the step up in cost is crazy. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking four to five hundred quid per show to two and a half to three grand. Wow. Yeah. yeah, but um, it comes with its own. Wow, yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, now they have the same issue. Yeah, that naturally. I wanted, I did last, I did the last, I did spring last year. I did the winter last year. No, I did the spring this year, winter this year. I wanted to do spring and winter again. They basically told me, no, you can't. Yeah, because they need, because of the, because again, they've got the same thing. They've got this massive waiting list. So what they said, they said no initially. And then they said, actually, we've done some jigging. And again, because they basically said that, out of loyalty to me and the fact that I do at every opportunity I can I shout about that wedding show because I think it's a banger yeah now they love that of course they do yeah Yeah, because they're like because naturally when someone of a certain weight puts their weight behind your show it gives validity doesn't it yes um so, and I think that is 100% the mark, yeah? You know you're nailing it because you're having to put on more shows. <laughs> you're having to put on more shows to accommodate more people. It is, yeah, it really is that. And, you know, I think as well, you know, a really important part of why it's grown and how it's grown is, is the personal touch to it. Is, you know, for me, I pride myself on knowing who does these events on a personal level. Yeah. You know, whether I've only met you once or I've met you a thousand times, yeah. you know, the key for me to keep people wanting to come back to this, yeah. but they're not only coming back to it for them giving their all when they're there, yeah. which is for me is a big important part of it too. I don't want people just turning up, standing there, looking for a quick payday and yeah. then they're off. Yeah. 
because they're, they're not, that's not my people. No, no, no. no. They, 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 there's plenty of events that's that they can do that. Well, they, they, yeah, of course it is. <clears throat> they can go and do that elsewhere. It's connect with the people that... The, the it goes back to the name of the, the event. Yeah. It, it's connect and create. And, you know, for me, the big part of what, why I'm doing it and why people come to me to do it is because I've connected with all of them. Whether it, like you say, if you've done it one year and you've done it multiple years, you know you're going to come to my event and I'm going to be there with open arms for you. Yeah. Even if I've met you just, like I say, yeah, one yeah, time, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make the effort yeah. to make you feel that you're special for being there. Yeah. And I think that goes such a long way. And again, when people haven't done these things often, what a lovely thing to come into and think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I belong here. That's how we became friends, isn't it? Because you know I mean? we've got a mutual friend yeah. who said, you, you were doing this event, yeah. you would fit. <clears throat> I reached out. We connected. Yeah. Here we are. And that's it. Yeah. It's so easy. It's because you meet somebody and you go, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah? You you because you get it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you get it. And it, it doesn't have to be so overcomplicated than that. <laughs> it really is a case of you've got a great personality. You've got a great business. You come and join us. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, we'll yeah. look after you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll give you that platform yeah. to kind of step up with as well. And I think that. Like I say, it just looks after itself now yeah. when people do get involved. They're like, you know, this is Che's, you know, event. You know he's going to be good with you, you know? Yeah, 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 he's going to yeah, look yeah, after yeah. you 100% yeah, with yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah. And I think they love the thought of, like, they belong there because they've been asked to do it or they've been accepted to do it. Yeah, yeah. They're there for a reason. Yeah. It's because I've, I think, well, you know what, you belong here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that you're going to bounce off everyone else that are here too. You deserve the spotlight. Of course. Yeah. But you also, you add... Yeah, you add you add value. Yeah. yeah, because this show is and what's wrong with that? Setting your bar high, setting your standards, yeah, yeah in terms of Absolutely. but not standards in terms of the quality, but more the you got to have the right feel, the right flavor, the fact that somebody's putting their all into it, they're passionate about it. They are a wizard at what they do. No that that you know, you do what you do. And you do it so well. You deserve this this spotlight to go. This is me. This is how good I am at the, and what I do. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it is now. Bravo to you, man. Bravo to you. And like I said, you have. I always I like to think that the people I have on here, and I've said this multiple times, that I want I want either people I like, people who I respect, or people that are driven. Yeah. Um, and you are all free. Yeah, because you've got drive, you're an epic person and, you know, you are just, you're just, you're just smashing it and it's so impressive. I want, so impressive. what I want it to be more than anything as well is infectious. Yeah, yeah. I want people to come and talk to me, whether it be at a festival, whether it be at my shop, yeah. whether it's this and you come away with it and think, you know what, just give me a bit of a drive there yeah, yeah, and I yeah. want to crack on and do what I, if he can do it. Yeah, yeah. And believe me, I had no real kind of strong suit in skill sets yeah. at the very start of any yeah. of this, yeah. but what I've built it into and what yeah, I am yeah. now, yeah. much like yourself, much like anyone that's really cracked on with their passion, yeah, yeah, yeah. it shines through in their work rate and their kind of the way they put it out to people. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you can always learn from those types, you yeah. know? And I feel like that's where I really want it to be is that infectious feeling of yeah. you're coming along to these festivals, yeah. you're seeing the vibe and the atmosphere and the interaction that yeah, you're yeah. getting from all of these types and you're thinking, this is where I want to be yeah. and this is really going to kickstart me into, in my head, I hope, yeah. doing what they want to do. Yeah. Because the most rewarding part of, out of any of this is, you know, months down the line, seeing them from that festival to where they are then, and seeing how much they've evolved, not only as a business, but as a person, mm -hmm. and thinking, it's just the best feeling, yeah, you right. know? And I live for that. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I had, for anybody who noticed, we didn't have a podcast on Monday, um, because I did have a guest, we recorded one, and there was an issue with the microphone. So we had a week out, um, but that guest will come back on. Now, that guest, who I won't name because I want their episode to be a surprise and I want to keep them under wraps so that you listen to their pod because they deserve the spotlight too. Um, but they sat in that chair and I'd only met that person once before, um, part of the wedding industry. Yeah. And um, she said the first ever time that she said, this is quite embarrassing to say, but the first ever time I met you, I felt completely inspired by you. 
yeah? And that's what you do. It's what you do, yeah? You are man. You are, you know, I like... I'm, I'm, I'm fully well established now and I am, and I get that maybe I inspire people. That's wicked. Yeah. But you inspire me. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 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 Just because I might be, I might be perceived as being a certain thing. Yeah. I might be, I might by some certain circles be perceived to be successful. Although I always say that is with, that is a short term thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because you could flick a switch and I'm no longer successful. So, you know, that's not how it works, is it? But, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with just because I'm successful, yeah, if I am, that I can't be like, yeah, wowed by what you do. But 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 same, you know, I, I'm, I'm inspired by, you know, yourself. I'm inspired by anyone I come across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that they get it. Yeah. And they're in it for the right reasons yeah. and, and they're doing what they love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how can you not be inspired by stuff like that? I, when I look at someone and I think that they're fully engrossed in what their, their creative side is, I think I'm going to take something from you here, yeah. like energy wise, and yeah, I'm going to yeah. use that for myself. Yeah. And I think, how can you not? You yeah. know, I get it from, if, you, if you're not getting it from anywhere and everywhere, you're doing something wrong Absolutely. and you're and you're not surrounding yourself with the right environment. Boom. Boom. So, Boom. Yeah. 100% man, 100%. Um I definitely think this idea that yeah, absolutely. We you've got what I've what I found is in now that is mostly because I've been so very busy. But I'm so busy and then I've got wife and child that I want to spend all my spare time with. I don't see my friends at the moment. And, and I don't I don't feel like I'm leaving them behind because I don't feel that way because they're both, my two best friends, they're both super successful in their own right, yeah? Um, but I definitely, I get a kick from spending my time with people like yourself, yeah? Because I can, you get my pace, you understand my drive, you understand everything I say, yeah. when I say it, why I say it, mm. what my trail of thought is. Yeah. Because you are there. Because yeah. you are that human too. Yeah. yeah? Ju it's justified then, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. you do is kind of justified yeah. because of the relatability that you get from someone that's going through it at the same point, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, you know, on the other side of that, I know lots of people that maybe aren't quite as driven, yeah? yeah? And I don't get much from them, yeah? Because I don't feel like that's, who but then equally they probably don't feel they feel like i'm probably too much no. but then also as well i i always look at that as a bit of a challenge then as well and think you know you can be changed you can be more, you can be more. I've seen it yeah. firsthand through yeah, people yeah, that i've yeah. dealt with it again just during my time with these festivals especially yeah. sometimes in the shop too with customers for, for instance but i see them grow yeah. and i see them kind of understand yeah, where yeah, they yeah. want to be yeah. where they're probably not outwardly showing that yeah and kind of where they are now and I think well you know there's there's room for growth in everyone and, that, and I, dog, yeah. literally yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that yeah in essence I, I feel like that kind of what we've said is, is, is summed up connect and create yeah. I don't know if you want to go into like where we're going from here with the connect create and collaborate side of things yeah, yeah we could do why don't we why don't we call um, the end of part two for now um, and we'll enter we do that for part three epic Cool. Welcome back to part three, an epic first two parts so far. I hope you agree. Um, I am truly inspired when I talk to people like this just because, oh, it's so good. It's so good to have someone across the table from me that gets everything that I say <laughs> in terms of how I'm wired, why I do what I do, how driven I am, um, because if anything, you are at least that, if not more. Um, so, and it is wicked, it is wicked. Um, so I want to tail off with, um, obviously you've had a bumper 2023. Um, what does 24 and beyond look like for you? I mean, <laughs> a whole multitude of things. <clears throat> I, I guess it'd be good to start with the shop. I feel like, cause that's again, my, my number one. That's the baby. That, yeah. is the, the, that is the baby. Um, as I said before, 
I've got it where I want it to be now in terms of the aesthetic, what I kind of provide in store. I think I didn't really get around to mentioning it before, but um, I've started to do a lot of like American imported goods in there now. So I've leaned away from it just being a clothing store and it's now almost like a mini department store. Yeah. Um, but that's come again from just researching smaller businesses and brands across the pond getting in touch with them and then in turn them getting back to me and, and providing the goods for me to supply in the store. And that's taken on its own mantle within the shop now, which is, is amazing. Nice. And, and it's given me not only business relationships, but friendships, the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. Stuff that you just wouldn't even dream of Bad, to, yeah. to begin with. You yeah, think, yeah. how is this even a thing, you yeah. know? In fact, I went over to Orlando earlier this year and... I was able to meet one of the businesses that, that I work with. And, you know, just to have that one-to-face -face, that -face interaction and think to myself, Jesus, I'm here for pleasure, but I'm actually getting a business trip yeah, out of this yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you'd have said that to me 10 years ago when I'm playing FIFA all night and uh, mm. doing a shot every time I can see the goal with a mate or whatever, <laughs> unheard of, you know? Yeah. So f for what that's afforded me to have in life is unbelievable. Yeah. So <clears throat> on from that, I feel like evolving that even more so within the shop. I feel the possibilities are endless with where I can take it with that side of things. Mm -hmm. The clothing brand, the in-house clothing brand is, is just growing and growing. Like people are coming in just for that a lot of the time now, which again is, is crazy in its own right. You know, people are just knowing, again, like we said at the beginning of the show about brand recognition and yeah. kind of knowing identity where mm -hmm. it's from mm -hmm. well people are knowing where it's from now and they're coming for it and they're yeah. you know even online i'm selling it all all across the country which is great to see always a new address every week so you think it's just spreading like wildfire at the moment for, for <laughs> in, in a good way <clears throat> so you know that will kind of take on another level i'll start releasing a few more things in fact i just worked with a local business uh, lovebird jewelry um, and we did a, coll a collaboration with um, some S uh, S sterling silver cove necklaces oh, uh, that were released literally the last couple of weeks. Oh, nice. um, we sold out of them already. Yeah. So we'll do another run of those before Christmas, oh. I hope, if we can get out in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, things like that, working relationships with people that I've met through Connect and Create as well. Yeah. This is, you know, and we'll get onto this in a, in a minute, but... You know, that, that's, you know, where I'm focusing on, on pushing the shop forward. I said as well that I've got my friend working with me. I really want to kind of enhance his role within the business in the next 12 months. Yeah. But I also want to expand the workforce. I don't oh. want it to just be him. Yeah. I've got someone else lined up in my head, that, you know, that will, in due time will be announced. Yeah. And I just need to work out their role within what the business yeah. is going to offer yeah. them. But this is the exciting part of it now. It's getting to the point where I can start building a team mm -hmm. and I really want to kind of share what I've built with people, yeah. you know, and get them inspired, get them rolling with what they want to do as well. And if I can help in any way I can, yeah. I'm there for them, yeah. you know? Go on. And you do lead yourself into a position, don't you, where, you know, I, I can see this for you. I could see a world where you don't just have one cove. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's never out of the equation. I, I, I do feel like that is your, that's your potential, your next progression, isn't it? May, maybe that yeah. to a point where you, now this is always tricky because what do you do? Do you then become a CEO type guy and, you, and you're not in, you're not in amongst it. You take a step back. I don't think I could ever be No, honest. but that would be the point, isn't it? That you, 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 you couldn't really do that, could you? Because you wouldn't want to. Yes, but um, this whole idea of taking, you know, taking a hand off the wheel, because um, I now have Toby and Faye, and obviously Faye is her own photographer, so does just seconds for me, but Toby's my other videographer. Okay. So there are, there are times in the year now where he goes out on his own. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Now, naturally... What you've got to think about from my standpoint is, is that if I'm sending him in my place, mm -hmm. it, it, I can, f you think you have any qualms about him not being me, yeah? Why the hell would I be selling, sending him, yeah? If I'm sending him, I know he can do That's it. Approval, it, it is my, it is, if, yeah. if, 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 if anything, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, that absolutely. I am prepared to give him my business name yeah. at my, the standard that I've built this up to make it yeah. 
um, and go, you can do this for me and nobody will know the difference. They won't know if it was me or you. They would possibly be because of our personalities because Toby's a bit shy, a bit quieter. Um, but that's all, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it's... Yeah. For me, that's kind of where... I want that progression to be with the people that I, you know, have within my team is that they're extensions of me, but they still have their own personalities with it and with their own kind of experiences, what they can offer me in turn. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like that I'm no closed book on how I can evolve. And I feel like I'm always learning from everyone and anyone you know if you, if yeah, you don't yeah. then you you know you're not oh. doing it right you know don't stand still, do it. no you don't you can't you just <laughs> you simply can't. can't but the ones that stand still will get left behind and that's it and um so yeah uh, from from the shop out- outlook that that's kind of where i see it kind of progressing into like building the team taking the shop on the road a little bit maybe doing a few more events up country um we, we recently did bristol tattoo convention this this year this summer unbelievable oh, wow. weekend i mean thousands of people there so cool. just you know so cool. you know what i mean yeah, a, man, a, a, so a cool. massive wider wow. audience on it and you so fit. yeah it did it yeah. fitted in like a glove you yeah. know so who's to say you know we, we may do a, mul- a multitude of those sort of events in the new year we'll, we'll, i'll sit down in january and i'll kind of assess where we need to go with a time frame on these things and that will kind of you know involve the people that i want to get involved with it as well yes. and see where they want to go with it yeah. if they're up for doing these things with me yeah. and then in turn it kind of gives me that pathway that cool. i need to go in so shop wise that cool. connect and create is evolving and it's evolving fast straight <laughs> straight straight in, straight into january we've got <clears throat> a new initiative i've been thinking about for a while um, and it's really something where it does, you know, yeah, you can say that I'm the organizer, I'm the one who's kind of put this together, but, you know, I want to look so much more past that now, and I, I want the eyes to be on everyone, and not just, well, Che's done this, let's do that. It's like, no, 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 this is your time now to kind of step up and do what you want to do. Yeah. So the, the initiative is called Connect, Create, and Collaborate. So it's an extension from what Connect and Create has been. Mm-hmm. And it really is just that chance for fellow creatives, whatever line of experience you have, whether you're, you know, you're fully involved in it or you're just starting up. I want to hear from you. And I, and I think everyone else wants to hear from you as well. Yeah. Given that platform, and that comes in the guise of a meeting, I think we're doing a creative meetup on the, in the end of January, um, which again, I'll, I'll be a bit more vocal about nearer the time <clears throat> where we're gonna have everyone meet up that wants to meet up that, yeah. that buys into what i'm saying right now yeah. and it really is giving them that space to kind of stand up and chat and and say look i've got this idea like what do you think and i'm like well yeah we could roll with that we could help with that we, yeah. we could maybe get the ball rolling with these sort of things yeah or we've got someone else who thinks, right, I really want to work with another business on something. You know, I'm giving this a call to, you know, call out to anyone that may be interested in wanting to team up and do a collaboration of any sort. Yeah. Is there anyone here? Well, if they're not here, well, at least we've got now the, the, the window to show people that would be interested. Mm-hmm. It's really just giving so many more people that opportunity to really follow a passion yeah. like I've done yeah. and, and, and look where it's taken it, you know? And I feel like that, again, it goes back to me just being one man doing that. Yeah. What's to stop someone else with such, a, you know, even better ideas than me, which I'm sure there's plenty of them, yeah. to go, look, I've got this really great idea. I really want to kind of take it somewhere. What do I do? Who do I speak to? We well, speak to me and I'll make the ball roll a little bit. But then, you know, you've got a whole multitude of people here that want to help too. Yes. And I feel that's where it really grows into it being the network that it, it truly deserves to be. And it not just being relying on the, the festivals. Mm-hmm. I want it to be looked at, you know, yeah, the festivals, they're there. Yes, but now it's everything else. Yes, because the festival are, is more about, the festival is somewhat more about customer to supplier whereas what you're talking about is you're talking supplier to supplier yeah yeah you're talking about the brains of these brains behind this operation talking to these brains behind this operation talking behind these brains behind this operation 
And let's be real about it. If you are running a successful business, you have brains. <laughs> You've got, you know what's going on, yeah? yeah? And, and that doesn't necessarily make you the smartest person in the room, but it makes you the smartest person in your room, yeah? yeah? It makes you the smartest person in your industry. Yeah. Yes, um, and definitely, that's wicked, man. So, yeah, that, I, that, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be more than, I'd be well happy to get involved there. Know, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Gets you thinking, doesn't yeah, it? As yeah, soon yeah. as you say it, and as soon as I put it out on my socials and I start talking about it to people, yeah. I could see the cogs turning. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you, you want to be part of this, don't you? And I know that you need to be listened to as well. Yeah. I can see it in so many people that come in. And that's where I'm, the passion comes from for me, is when I see people come in and, you know, they've got these great little ideas and I can see it like tinkering away in their heads and they're thinking what do I do with this how do I do this how do I do that and I'm thinking you know I know what you can do with it you yeah, can yeah. get this on a massive scale yeah. in terms of people hearing you yeah. that's step one yeah. and then step two is people there to help you and support you it really is a support network of businesses and creatives musicians the lot yeah. you know there's no kind of no one's exempt from this it's really a case of getting as many people together as we can and, and showing that we're all pulling in the right direction and in the same direction as well. Yeah. You know, we, I, I always compare, you know, when people say, oh, well, we, you, know, you go to Bristol, you go to London, you go to even Exeter to a smaller extent. They've got all these cultures, they've got all these, you know, things happening. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, that's them. Well, let's forget about them for a minute. Let's yeah, think yeah, about yeah. here and now yeah. where, we, where we live. Yeah and think that, you know, if we want things to happen, when we've got to do them, yeah. and it helps so much more if someone's pulling together in the yeah. same direction, yeah. whether it be, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 people. Yeah. I mean, that's a head start that's in it. where we're going to go that's with it. these things forward. And everyone's got their own ideas with it all. And, and that's, in essence, what Connect, Create and Collaborate is all about. So, you know, you get to the end of this yeah. year, and I want to be having a conversation with someone and thinking, yeah. hey, that event we put on in March was, yeah, yeah. you know, brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. And I think it wouldn't have happened if we'd not put this initiative together yeah. to give them the voice that they want. So cool, man. So cool. Go. No, look, I, I know, I, I get that because we, you know, I'm part of the North Devon Wedding Network. We run our own annual um, show in January. Yeah. Um, and it has just, because the network's grown and it's become this beast, it's now the biggest show in North Devon. Yeah. And it's like, and it, and the reason why it has that strength is because unlike other wedding shows where it's run by a wedding organizer, yeah. our show is run by us, all of us. Yeah. So there's not one, two, three people. There's 30, 40, 50 people even if it just means packing something to give to somebody, if it's moving furniture, yeah. yeah? And it makes such a massive difference yeah. because it's a wedding community. It's not, we're not wedding, we're not fighting against each other going, oh, I, I want it, I want it, this, I want all the pus, I want all the custom. It's cool, what do you need? What do you need? Mm. Cool, you got your photographer, you got a videographer, well done. Mm bravo you've smashed it you got it so early well done so you don't need to talk to me but what do you need yeah yeah Yeah. what do you need you need them cool go in that space there yeah. there is that person that person i've worked with both of them so i can give them my seal of approval if that's enough for you go and have a chat to them see what you think yeah. see if they're the ones for you it's what it's all about isn't it it's, it's helping each other Correct. you know I, I i i see people you know i've seen it up and down the years when they've they've gone it alone or they get super protective about what their business is and how they're perceived from other likely, you know, like yeah. similar businesses, yeah, so we yeah. say. And I think, you know, there's room for everyone. Yeah, of but you've got to have that right mindset to want to, you know, approach yeah. that and kind of engage in it as well. And I think if you don't, then, you know, you miss out on these things. Yeah. And don't come back at us in several years time and think, well, you know, I should have really taken you up on that opportunity of getting involved in this. <laughs> because for me, it, it, you know, year on year on year, like, like you've done with yours, like other people have done with theirs, you want to just see it just grow and grow and grow, and you know, and I don't see any reason why this can't be the biggest thing in North Devon, especially in North Devon, where this this constant network of creativity yeah. is getting flowed through. The, the, the even like you know, you look at the students coming through, the youngsters coming through. Yeah. What a, what, a, what a great thing they'll they'll see when this is already happening, yeah. and they're coming through. For, well, we didn't have this before. Like we would have just 
purely just went to a city for this. Yeah. Now it's actually happening here. Yeah, yeah, Gives yeah. them the option, you know? It's Gets them thinking about, well, actually, we can probably do some stuff here as well as afar. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I feel like that's, you know, I, I forgot to mention as well with the shop as well, it's the 10th year anniversary next year. So that's a big kind of landmark in what the shop is. Yeah. But I've said for a few years in my own head um, that I always like to analyze everything after like a 10 year sort of period. Mm-hmm. I feel that's a good kind of marker to be like, well, what, where do I go with the next 10 years, you know? Yeah. So very much part of the, these, these next 10 years is, is, is growing both the shop even to, to bigger heights, but the festival and, 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 and the Connect and Create you know, brand itself you know, I want to be looking at in 10 years time mm-hmm. and think I left nothing unturned with this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I let, let no kind of thing away from me. I want it to be what it potentially mm-hmm. can become. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel like that's the exciting part because I won't let it not work. Yeah. I'll, it, Damn right. Yeah. Damn right. Why, why invest the time in Damn it? Right. Why get so many people involved why when you, that? yeah. Why if you go, why, 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 if you're not going to put all, if you're not going to put all in, why bother doing that? I don't want that, you know? Yeah. I can't half ass anything. It's got to be 110%, you know? Correct, 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 correct. I freaking love it. No, absolutely, man. You get it. You get it. You understand it. Yeah. Um, and it's why it's, it's, it keeps, why it's the beast it now is. Yeah. And why it will continue to be. 100%, mate. 100%. You got this. Epic. Right, man. I think that's wicked. Um, such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries, ma'am. Um, so obviously, if you want to watch or listen to either of these podcasts, either this one or any of the ones that precede it, um, we are on Spotify or any other um, podcast provider. I always stumble over that one. Um, but we're also available on YouTube if you'd like to watch on there. Um, absolute pleasure, dude legend so good we could have talked we could have kept going there that that could have been a long old podcast but maybe maybe we'll have a part two absolutely maybe a part two um yeah nice one guys thank you for listening and watching take care bye